Hello, this is Mary Jane One, and here's a um, 2XL um, 1978 um, 8-track um, tape player um, that someone is having me fix. So, there's two problems with it. Um, number one is the volume control does not really work. Um, there's only little spots so you can hear it a little bit. And also the um, power supply is, um, the lid came off, but that'll be easy. Um, but the um, volume control turns on. Um, and in certain spots, let's get this in the back here. You can hear it a little bit, but that's about it. So, um, it seems like the um, volume control wheel, or the um, little pot in there is probably um, dirty or worn out. Um, but I guess it could be the amplifier or something like that too. Um, I'm not really sure exactly, so I'm going to have to open it up and see. Um, and we'll also find out how it works. So, um, the tapes actually... Um, I believe that they just have a big long um, piece of the um, tape in there and it's just kind of bunched up in there. Um, and that's basically all it is. Um, and then in here we've got the uh, head there and the um, uh, the rollers there. Um, it's, it actually seems like it answers questions. I'm not sure if that works or not because I can't really hear it so I don't know what, to, what buttons to press. But um, so yeah, um, we'll open it up and see what it looks like inside and um, fix it. Alright, so here's the inside. Um, it's really simple, um, which is pretty much expected. But um, there's the circuit board up there. There's probably the amplifier and a little bit of electronics for the um, questions. So it seems as though what happens is... So here's the motor right here, um, and there's the um, pickup. And then we've got a little solenoid right here. Um, so let me put the tape in and turn it on. Get it to play. Alright, so the tape is in. And then, so, down here is the pulley, and the belt is perfectly fine after all those years. Um, but, <coughs> so that spins this right here, and that advances the tape through there. So let me turn it on here. Alright, so that spins. And then the solenoid, when it turns on, so when you press the question buttons, it um, turns on and spins this little thing and moves the um, the head up and down there. So to change, um, I guess it would tell you yes or no or something like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but as you can see, it comes down, hits the spinning thing there, hits that, and this advances the um, tape around. So or the um, head up. And Right, so there's a little um, volume control wheel there. Um, so it's just the kind that has a little switch on it. So it's a somewhat common part. Um, I don't believe I have any of those. Um, but I tested the resistance and it seems to be all over the place. Um, and it's also quite um, loose-ish there. And I don't believe that that's... No, that's the actual um, housing. The nut is still secure. The nut doesn't move. But the, um, the whole housing part is probably, um, it probably got smashed or something. Alright, so I fixed this. I soldered the, um, the bearing back on there, um, because the crimps had come undone. So that's all fixed. And the resistive coating looks just fine. Um, so I actually don't think this was the main problem. Um, actually the main problem was the, um, two speakers that were, um, coupled to the, or I don't know if they're coupled, but they were in series with the, um, speaker. Usually there's... Um, there's capacitors in series with a speaker um, so that the speaker doesn't draw too much current if the um, well I guess that's what it is so this, the capacitor charges up and then the the um, speaker can't draw any current but um, there was two um, 220 um, microfarad capacitors these two were bad I popped them out and measured them with my um, well I traced the circuit back because it was very weak um, the signal and um, so I was using the oscilloscope, and I noticed that on one side of the capacitor, it was just the signal was really weak. On the other side, it was going to the amplifier, and it was very strong. So I was like, hmm, I think that capacitor is dead. So I popped it out and tested it, and it was only a few um, nanofarads. So, um, yep, that was the problem. Here they are right here. Um, and the other one was um, connected to ground to the speaker. So, so yeah, that one has a little bit of juice leaked out of it there. Um, but yeah, they're probably dried up or something. 
I tested the rest of them and they all seem fine, so that's good. Okay, so I got the um, the potentiometer back in there and it works, um, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to try to explain how this thing works. So, I drew up a diagram here. Um, so here we've got our, cell and, our, um, our electromagnet and then we have our four switches here. And these switches are, um, are a certain types so that if one is pressed in, or they're toggle switches, but they are, only one can be pressed in at a time. So if I press a different one, it pops out and another one pops, can, can lock in. So, so, so yeah. Um, and then over here we have another little switch, which is this switch right here. And that is activated by the um, solenoid when it goes over. Um, so what happens is, so this, this selector right here is, it knows what, um, what track it's reading. So what happens is the power is down here. It goes through the solenoid or the um, electromagnet through the switch. Um, and then if this one is pressed in, it will go through here, the signal, and through here, through these, all of these, and so all of these will, if the, um, the selector lands on any of these, then it will have power, or the solenoid will have power. So this one is dead, so it won't receive power if it lands there. So it'll go here, so if it starts out here, so if it's here, and you press this one down, what will happen is this one will be live, so it will activate the solenoid, so the solenoid will get activated, it will be pressed over, it will start switching that, it will also um, unactivate itself. So when the solenoid is fired and this starts to spin, it doesn't really need power anymore, so it will just stay um, activated there until it's back. And so it will press that switch in so that it doesn't stay pressed down, so it brings, it, so it lets itself up and then it can reset so so that's what that switch there does so that resets it so that it doesn't just keep receiving signal and get stuck down so so it so if this one is alive all, all er, yeah so wait a minute um where was i so let me start over so okay so if all of these are live and this one is the one that's pressed down and let's say the pointer is here actually, then it will have power to the cell, it'll, the, re, the um, electromagnet will have power and it will activate, it will push this button, it, it'll, it'll push itself down, it'll push over, it'll start switching the, um, this to the next one and it'll also activate this so that it brings itself back up and then it will go to the next one and keep doing that and because it'll keep getting power until it gets to the dead one. So if this one is the one that's pressed in, it's dead. So it will stop there because it won't have any power to keep going. And then it'll do that track. So then if you press the next one, it will... So let's say we press this one and this one was pressed. This one will be switched back over. And this one will be switched in. So now this one is dead and all of these ones have power. So now this, the um, electromagnet has power. So it'll activate and bring itself to this one. It'll still have power, it'll activate again. And it'll land on this one and it won't have any power. And it'll read that track. So it's pretty simple, but it's really ingenious. Um, and then there's also this little, um, right down here, there's a um, little two metal prongs there on the, um, that rub the tape. And at the end of the tape there is a, um, it, the what holds the two piece the ends of the tape together is metal. Um, it's a little piece of aluminum um, foil, um, and that's what this is here. I'm not exactly sure what that does, um, but it seems to somehow. I guess it must just click, so it tells you that it's the end of the tape. Um, and I'm not really sure on what that does exactly, but um, it does. It's there, and um, it clicks the relay when it's or the um, solenoid. Or electromagnet, there's too many names for it. Electromagnet when it's um, at the end of the tape. So I guess, I don't know if it resets it. I don't think it really resets it, but it 
does something. So all this electronics up here is only the amplifier and the um, the transistors to blink the LED um, eyes and the power light up there. That's all that is right here. The rest is just the um, switches, which those are just um, over there, and they, they just go straight to those wires and over here um, to the, um, the selector there. So it's really, really neat. And then here we have the, um, the little switch to sense when the tape is in. And then there's the volume control, and that's about it. I mean, that's pretty simple. And one thing I don't know, I don't know why it's called an 8-track, but it only has 4 tracks, so I don't exactly understand that. But maybe it would have 2, if it was songs on here, it would have 2, um, two different s sections. So it would be 2 songs long, but you could play 4 songs in each one. So you'd get eight songs, so it'd be an eight track, I guess. That's why it's, maybe that's why it's called that. Um, but I'm not really sure of that. So, power it up here. One, four, nine, six, eight, four, three, two, five, five, two, eight, two, nine, two, two, three, so one, it's two, working. Remember six, eight, two, one, two, nine, two, three, two, four, two. Is your answer A, B, or C? Please choose your answer now. So, I'm not sure what question to ask, but I'll just choose one, and we'll see what it says. And then it has to get to the next, um... Thank you very much. Talks. I certainly am glad you follow instructions. For this next question, I have decided to give you another choice. If you would like a question about New York City, push A. If you would like a question about the word gurning, G-I-R-N-I-N-G, push B. Or if you would prefer a question about the highest mm. flying bird in the world, push C. Please push your A, B, or C. Now. I guess I'll do A, just for the heck of it. So switch to the next track. So that'd be the second track. So, so yep. Yeah. Um. Since you have chosen A, here is your question about New York City. Which fruit represents New York City? Is your answer A, a small peach, B, a rich orange, or C, a big apple? Please answer A, B, or C now. Should I choose wrong or right? Hmm. I don't know. I guess I'll go with right. So. So now it has to get to the next spot. With my looks and your brains, we could go far together. You have answered C, and believe it or not, C happens to be the correct answer. Do you have any idea how many pieces of information your brain might store in your entire lifetime? I will give you three choices just to see if you can guess at this. I don't think you know it because after all, you're only a human being. But here are three choices anyway. Do you think your brain will store up A, 100,000 pieces of information, B, 100 million pieces of information, or C, 100 trillion pieces of information? Please answer or guess A, B, or C now. All right, I'll choose B, Pretty I guess. Good guess. You have guessed A, oh, 100 right. million pieces. And in fact, you are correct. 100 million is correct. Can you imagine 100 million pieces of information for a human brain? But that's not so good as a robot computer brain. I can probably <laughs> store, let's say, a hundred million, trillion, million, million, gazillion, million, and million, million, million pieces of information, if I'm lucky. Let's I don't really think it's a robot. It's not necessarily... to give you a choice. Not necessarily robot, but... Okay, whatever. So it's pretty cool. Alright, so it's all back together, and it works perfectly, so that's good. Um, so yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Um, I might be able to use that circuit for something, actually, because that's a pretty useful little um, circuit there. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what it could be useful for, but maybe something like... Um, actually, a JD Flyback, he made a circuit sort of similar. Um, he, he It was like a calculator circuit, so... I don't know.
So you might be able to use it for some kind of a, like a calculator or um, I don't know. It's kind of neat little circuit there. So so yeah, um, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.